and welcome to Disappeared the Abyss. Tonight we're discussing the episode called Favorite Son. Here with me is Jacob. Hi, Jacob. Hi, Alina. How are you doing tonight? Doing well. How are you? I'm well as well. In tonight's case, we're talking about William, or called Billy by his family and friends and us tonight. Billy Smolinski, and he was 31 years old at the time he disappeared. He disappeared from Waterbury, Connecticut on Tuesday, August 24th, 2004. A few days before he disappeared, he was on his way um, to a short trip to Florida with his girlfriend, Madeline. Girlfriend at the time, I should say. They went to West Palm Beach to visit Madeline's 13-year-old son at the time. He was staying with his older brother and Billy, who was described as more of a home buddy. Um, to him, this trip was really a big deal because he didn't go on many vacations. Madeline and Billy had been seeing each other for about a year at the time. They met working as school bus drivers. Billy's friends and family had um, mixed feelings, as it was described on Disappeared, about their relationship because Madeline was 15 years older than Billy and she'd already been married three times and had several children. Billy suspected that Madeline had an affair with their boss from the school bus company and while they were in Florida, his suspicion his suspicions intensified because he noticed that Madeline would talk on the phone in the shower and uh, police later confirmed that Madeline was in fact having an affair with a married man. When they returned from their vacation, Billy confront decided to confront Madeline and she did admit to having an affair, which led to their breakup. Now, Billy worked for a tow truck company, and on Monday, August 23rd, he was driving around in the afternoon and evening, and everything looked and appeared to be normal. He ended up running into his ex-girlfriend, though, Mary Ellen, and she was the one who was taking care of Billy's dog while he was in Florida with Madeline, and he wants to thank, you know, her for... um doing this favor for him, so he suggests inviting her to Six Flags for the upcoming weekend. Now, they were in a relationship for eight years before they had broke up, and they remained friends, so this wasn't entirely out of the ordinary, but to Mary Ellen, it seemed that he may have been asking her out on a date that night. There was just something about it um, that gave her the feeling that this was more than perhaps just a, a friendship kind of invite that she might normally get. Uh, that encounter, though, was actually the last time that she would see or hear from Billy. And then on Tuesday, August 24th, between 4 and 5 a.m., we're told that Billy shows up at Madeline's house, the ex-girlfriend, and uses a ladder to climb up to her window in order to talk with her. Now, this is kind of unusual. Um, obviously, this is probably not something most people would do using a ladder in the middle of the night or the early morning to climb up to someone's window to have a conversation. Um, but in the show, they kind of say that this is something that Billy would do. He was just kind of like that. Um, it certainly seems to me like it's a, a weird move and... I, I can't tell if it's just, you know, if the family's right and that's just his character to do this or if this is has to do with the fact that, you know, he's upset and, and um, has broken up with this woman and, and needs to approach her in such a weird way. What do you think? I think that's definitely very odd. I, I think maybe it would feel different if they were still together and this was during the day. And yeah, we all know now that his family and friends say that he would do you know, use the back door, climb up to a window, whatever, like alternative ways to enter a home. But I think it just really depends on, um, you know, is it, if, is it during the night? Is it during the day? Do you, how well do you know the person? And since they just broke up and it was kind of, you know, an ugly breakup, I'd assume since he suspected her of cheating um, and it's in the middle of the night and the way 
it sounds like in the show, this may have been her bedroom window. I'd be yeah. so freaked out if someone climbed up on Me a ladder too. to Especially my bedroom at window. At that time, you're probably like sound asleep. Yeah, not expecting anyone. And even if he's done this before with her, they're broken up now. So do you really want your ex-boyfriend to show up like that? And I was just wondering if he was like thinking that maybe the other guy is with her and he would like catch them, you know, in the act or oh, find yeah, something possibly. out. So Because at this point he knows that that has uh, transpired. And I feel like you can tell he's going through something. Um, just his conversation earlier with his other ex-girlfriend, Mary Ellen, like it seems like if you believe her story that he's trying to ask her out for some more romantic uh, kind of occasion then maybe he's going back and forth between well you know I just I got out of this relationship I want to jump into something else and also then he's back at Madeline's you know trying to talk to her so you can tell he's just conflicted perhaps and and struggling so basically we have already brought up that his family believes the reason for his late night visit or early morning hour visit um, in this unconventional way was that um, Billy just does things in his own unique way and his um, ex-girlfriend Mary Ellen explained that he wouldn't usually use the front door when he came to see her and would always use the window or the back door as we brought up. Investigators state that they have evidence that Billy may have had darker intentions and they talked to uh, Billy's co-workers and it appeared that Billy was still very upset about the breakup that morning. So I was just wondering why does police think he had darker intentions? Um, they do say that in the episode, but I I don't think they really explain why. Did you get that? I think what they were trying to say is not that there's specific evidence from that night that would, you know, indicate some darker intentions, but just knowing his relative state, knowing the events that had transpired um, earlier and from an outsider perspective, like we had, who does that, you know, um, it just seems kind of like an unusual thing, which could indicate that, um, he is not in a, a, a good state of mind. If you believe, um, police, if you don't believe what the family is saying, that this was kind of normal for him. I agree. I just wish they would have elaborated on this on the episode. So this would be more clear yeah. to us and not up for speculation. Um, according to Madeline, because we, I guess, really just have her account of the night, um, she let Billy in, and they talked for an hour. He wanted to get back together, and she told him that she needs some time, whatever that means. I guess time to think about it, I guess, or time to, yeah, make a decision, make up her mind. Um, around 10 a.m., Billy made several phone calls. To his former boss, who he believes has an affair with Madeline. And he left a message stating, you better watch your back at all times. Which is a threat, a clear threat. And making several calls to someone, threatening them, is probably not the best idea. Yeah, that seems like a, a red flag. Especially, I found that just a little weird because how his family described Billy, it didn't seem like something he would do. Like it was, I don't know if that's out of character, but I kind of got the impression that it was. Like he seems like a pretty um, easygoing guy, more or less. It, but I guess when it comes to this relationship, he was pretty defensive. In the late afternoon, Billy asked a neighbor if he could watch his dog because he wanted to drive up north, apparently, to look at some cars. Now, Billy did have a passion for working on cars. He would buy cheap cars and fix them up and sell it. So the idea of him going to buy or look at a car up north is not entirely out of the ordinary. On Wednesday, August 25th, Billy's neighbor, though, would call Mary Ellen because he couldn't find the keys to the house to watch the dog that Billy had promised to put out for him. And Mary Ellen thinks that this is definitely weird. Something's wrong um, right off the bat because they had actually got the dog together um, and had some sort of a, a kind of joint custody agreement going on. Um, and so, as we already know, she would watch the dog whenever 
he needed someone to, and so he wouldn't usually let anyone else watch that dog but her. So you can see why she was starting to get concerned out of this unusual behavior, and also why wouldn't he tell her, you know, that this was, even if he was going to have someone else watch the dog, why didn't he say he was going out of town or that he wouldn't be with the dog? Um, now, he did tell the neighbor that he wanted to go up north, and he apparently gives the neighbor some reasons why, but do you think there are some other reasons why he may have been leaving? I mean, he made threats to someone that day, and what if the threats got returned and now he felt like he should leave the area for a while um, and just didn't feel like he had the time to reach out to Mary Ellen um, and also knowing that she'd probably ask more difficult questions and he wouldn't be able to get away that fast. That's just where my mind went with it. Yeah, I think that's definitely a good point. That was my thought too, is that you know, he doesn't have to explain to the neighbor why he's leaving, but if he calls Mary Ellen to say, hey, can you watch the dog? No doubt. She's going to ask, sure, why? You know, where are you going? What are you doing? And clearly it was something that he knew he couldn't explain or explain or make up a good enough excuse that it would yeah, be... Yeah, because I think she wouldn't believe the story. I don't know. Sorry. Were you going to go there? Yeah, I think that's, a, you know, she knows him pretty well and um, I'm sure that she would be able to see through whatever kind of excuse he would give, whether it would be the, you know, going up north to look at cars or something else. Even because you have to consider that he just came back from a trip, which is already unusual for him to take. And then to just go up and leave like on his first day of work, basically, that definitely seems unusual for someone who knows him as well as Mary Ellen. So I, yeah. I'm sure she would have questioned him some more. Well, and your thought was, you know, what if he's trying to get away because he made these threats and now they're coming back to, um, you know, haunt him a little bit. But my thought is, well, what if he's trying to make good on these threats? You know, what if he has said he's going to do this and now he needs to go and, and act on them and he needs to, you know, get away and can't tell Mary Ellen what he's planning to do again because we know that... <laughs> she'll see through it or he'll have to tell the truth and that would be even worse so i guess in that scenario would we assume that the guy doesn't live in the area or just that he'd go there confront him you know do whatever he's planning to and then like leave because you know he can come back or are you assuming yeah. he lives like three hours away or something and that's what he meant by going up north I'm not sure. Well, and I don't know that we know what he really was planning, whether going up north is part of it or not. So just, you know, he needed some time away, regardless of where he was actually headed and, you know, needed someone to, to look after the dog in the meantime. Now, even more concerning is that Billy apparently leaves town without telling anybody. And according to Mary Ellen, Billy doesn't make spontaneous plans like Alina, you mentioned, and he would usually tell her if he was to leave town. Plus, Billy supposedly already had six cars in his yard and didn't need more. Although, that's what the show says. I kind of take issue with that because to me, it seems like if you already have a bunch of cars, then it makes sense that you're going to get more. That's kind of what agree. you do. You yeah, collect what's more, another so. car at that point? Yeah, exactly. What's another car? So maybe that is a, a point in the direction that he was telling the truth. Um Mary Ellen decided to call Billy's sister Paula, though, because she, as we said, she knew that something was very wrong. Paula immediately contacts her parents, Billy's parents, and they drive to Billy's house. Now, they are concerned when they find that Billy's truck is parked at the end of the driveway. This is a bit of a longer driveway, so um, when you're parked at the end of it, there's still quite a bit of space between the car and the garage, and that was unusual for Billy to do. He, apparently, he parked, you know, right up near the house in the garage, and his family becomes convinced that someone else drove Billy's truck there. Now, it does seem strange that his truck was parked further away. It seems like either someone dropped it off who didn't know, you know, or care how he usually parked his car, or that maybe more cars were in the driveway. Uh, to me, I would lean in the direction of someone probably dropped it off there, or perhaps when he came back, he was in a, a hurry and just didn't have time to go to his normal spot. What do you think? I was thinking about that too, but I think humans are, you know, really controlled by their habits. And 
it's not that much further. Like, yes, this is a long driveway, but it, you won't save that much ta- time by just parking there yeah. versus like rolling up a second longer and getting out where you always get out. So I highly doubt that this was him unless he was forced to stop there, you know, for some other yeah. reason. Then that's it, a possibility too. But It didn't seem like he was like, the position of the car was like erratic or like they had been going really fast and just stopped and someone jumped out of the car. It was more, it was like placed there kind of like you would expect to see a car parked in a driveway just in a different spot than he normally does. Yes. And I guess it'd be interesting if it's just his family and his ex-girlfriend, Mary Ellen, that think that this is really unlike him or if what his neighbor thinks or other friends, do they... You know, maybe a few of them say, well, once in a while he'd party like down there. And that would already, you know, make this a lot less suspicious. But that's not, we don't get that from the episode. So we just have to assume that what the family says is true here. And it's very unlike him. And this is very suspicious. Yeah. And another point that we don't fully know is if his truck was there, was any other car gone? Um, You know, we know he had other cars. So the question kind of becomes, how would he have gone up north without his car there? Um, And that's just something... I was wondering about that. Because, I mean, I guess if he was planning to buy a car somewhere, maybe he took a bus or something. I I would have liked to know how he usually went about those trips if, you know, he went somewhere to buy a car. Yeah, if you did go buy a car, you know, and you would, and you take your car there, you'd have that car and you would need somehow to get it back so maybe he didn't normally take you know a bus or some other mode of transportation um but we just don't have the full details on how many of his cars were were still in his uh his home there i'd assume they would have brought it up if one was missing billy's family decides to go to the police station and report him missing at this point Um, billy always showed up for work and stayed in touch with his family and friends The police says that since the neighbor claimed Billy said he'd gone up north for three days, they'd have to wait for three days. So wait out and see if Billy returns. Um, They can't really do anything for the family at this point. Since then, they have changed their policy. They take missing persons reports immediately now, and this, I think, is called Billy's Law. So in many of these cases, it seems like, unfortunately, they uh, just learn from their mistakes. And yeah, later on, you know, they, they switch up their policies and now jump on cases right away. But it always takes that one case, which is really tragic for them to learn. Do you have anything to say to that? No, I think you you nailed it. You know, unfortunately, they have to kind of be the test run to show why, um, you know, that policy isn't the best. I guess it's not really a policy. It's more of the detective kind of just looking at the scene and saying, well, he did say he was going to be gone for so-and-so days and we need to wait and see if he comes back. Um, but it would be nice if they took into account, you know, the family's concerns who know this person and know that this is very unusual. Um, and, and if they, you know, were a little more... Um, willing to listen to the family, then they would have been able to jump on this faster. I agree. In the Disappeared episode, I think one of the officers tries to explain, you know, in the situation, the officer was just trying to calm down the family, trying to be nice to them and, you know, let them know everything's basically going to be fine. You know, the neighbor was informed that he was going to be gone and all that. But I think this doesn't, isn't, really as helpful as they might think to a family where for them right away all the alarm bells are ringing and everything's so out of character that they know something's wrong and like you said that at that point they really should have listened to them earlier on thursday billy's sister searched his place to see if they'd find anything uh, that helped them locate him They found a receipt from Burger King from Tuesday, August 24th, which is the day he disappeared. And this receipt was timestamped at around 3 p.m. This is the last tangible evidence of Billy on the day he disappeared, according to investigators. 
Billy's mother and sister decide to go to the Burger King and see if they can get the surveillance video from August 24th. Unfortunately, though, they learn that it had already been recorded over at that point. On Thursday, his family decided to wait at his work because he was supposed to work a shift that night, but Billy never showed up. On Friday, every, uh, on Friday evening, Billy's family returned to the police station to report him missing. It had been over three days by then. Police enter him into the database for missing persons, and his description is broadcasted. This was when the official investigation started. They call everybody, but so I guess everybody, you know, friends, acquaintances, people Billy knew, but no one has heard from Billy. On the same weekend, a massive search for Billy was conducted, according um, to his mother, um, two to three hundred people showed up for the search. They searched for three days, all day, including searches in the river, and found nothing. Billy's financial records didn't reveal anything helpful to investigators in his case. So he usually, I guess, if someone were somewhere out there on their own militia, they'd need to spend some money on something, food, gas, money, a hotel room. So they look at financial records to see if there's any activity. And if there is none, then, you know, that's just not very helpful. And I think that's what they found here. According to investigators, cases like that of Billy are the most difficult ones because foul, foul play is suspected. They have nothing to go on. Billy wasn't involved with drugs or any criminal activities. He was described as your typical blue-collar guy by police. Now, once the media started to report on the case, you know, TV and newspaper reporters are reporting on it, and psychics started to come forward. One of the psychics called Billy's mother and told her that Billy was on the side of the river near railroad tracks bleeding, and if they didn't find him within a couple of hours, that he would die. So they search by the river. They're just desperate for any leads, but they find no trace of Billy. Other psychics contacted the family about about his disappearance, and they followed up every tip that they got because that was all they had. Each time there is a new gruesome scenario that someone has supposedly, you know, psychically detected, and each time they search but end up finding nothing. Police officers on Disappeared claim that, quote, I'm not saying that psychic information is not good, but it's all over the place. You can't completely dismiss or discount it, but you have to have a jaded view as to what the psychics are telling you, end quote. And I know, Alina, we talked about this uh, earlier, and police, you know, have an interesting viewpoint on psychics. Um, it kind of saying, you know, they, <laughs> like you said, are all over the place. I've got a lot of different ideas about what happened, but we also can't throw it out, um, which to me can be really tough, especially if you're a family member who understandably has to take all of this in, but I think you would just have a, a constant level of anxiety with all these different terrible scenarios that people are telling you are happening to your loved one, and you kind of feel like you have to investigate um, all of them, even if it tears you apart. To me, I 100% understand why the family listens to psychics. They say in the episode, you know, they have nothing else to go on and they want to hold out hope. They, they, you know, they need something to go on and that's what they give them, even though it's painful and I hate that it's painful for them, but I get where they're coming from, but it, I feel very differently well, with investigators though. And I don't really get it because at the same time he's discrediting them and saying that you should have a jaded view towards psych yeah. psychics. But he doesn't really explain to me why you cannot completely dismiss or discount them. I know it's commonly said by investigators that, you know, they bring in like uh, new ideas, uh, fresh right. eyes. But I think you could really get that from anywhere, from maybe uh, police um, students or, you know, um, armchair detectives. Anybody really um, can make an informed guess and 
um, psychics aren't any better than that. Right. They and just... maybe worse. Like you said, and an maybe informed worse. guess. <laughs> I don't always know about their intentions. I think maybe some of them believe that they have these abilities and really just want to help, but others may just want the money or the attention or have some disorder. I am not sure. But it just takes these families on this crazy emotional ride, ride or like roller coaster that they don't need because they're already in this horrible situation. And yeah, and also resources may get wasted. We talked about that too. If they yeah. follow all these leads, you know, um, they could probably do something more productive with their time. I agree. The psychics turn up no leads, but a search of Billy's pickup truck does. Um, a detective reveals that his wallet and keys were in the truck under the driver's seat and apparently had just not been found up until this point. So now they have, you know, his wallet, and that's where his cash is. They got his keys, so they are um, looking at this, and certainly it seems like a bad sign um, unless he somehow, like we said, got a, a ride some other way to a different location. Um, he doesn't have his keys and he doesn't have his money, so it's, it's really looking bad. Yeah, because I so at that point I was like wondering, okay, what are the options here? What could have happened? Um, so two things come to mind: is it suicide, and he tried to go somewhere, so not a family member or like nobody close to him will find him. This we know this happens, um, and that would explain why he kind of left everything behind. Um, or is there foul play involved here? Because if you consider him going into the woods and just being injured somewhere, then the question is, like, how far would he really go? Wouldn't you have been found? And would he really leave everything behind? Like, when you take your dog, if you're going outside, the dog would definitely like that, you know? Um, and why would you leave your keys, your wallet, everything behind? That just doesn't seem like something people would do, usually. I agree. And, and uh, that in combination with the fact that his truck is not in his normal spot, so um, it's starting to look suspicious. At this point, the family contacts a volunteer search and rescue group in order to make sure he isn't somewhere in the woods injured or lost. Together with search dog, they search within a 5 to 10 mile radius around Billy's house. They came every weekend until it started to snow. The search dogs, however, found no trace of Billy. Family and friends decided to make missing persons flyers and hang them all over several towns in the area. Billy's family spent almost all their free time hanging up flyers and looking for Billy. One night, while they were hanging up flyers, they noticed that flyers were put down, sometimes right after they had just put them up. Some flyers were mutilated, Others were left on the ground, and some of them even said, who cares on them? So, right, when you see this in this episode, you just go, oh, I can't believe anybody would do this. You know, there's a desperate family searching for their son who would even, like, mutilate the flyers, right? Who cares? Just, oh, what kind of horrible person do you have to be to do this? I don't, right. I don't get it. And it's also kind of just unusual in all the cases that we've seen and covered and heard about. Like, I've never really heard of this happening. I'm sure there are limited instances, but this, you know, this was widespread. I mean, this was happening uh, routinely. And so it's it's it just makes you wonder, is someone out there who is guilty or knows something or, you know, um, involved in this case, if they're behind this? In order to find out, who it was, they decided to stake out one of the places where they had to put flyers up and brought video cameras. After a few hours, they saw a car get there, someone running up to the flyer, ripping it down, throwing it on the ground, and leave. They videotaped what they saw that night and were surprised when they realized that the woman looked to be Billy's ex-girlfriend, Madeline. Billy's sister thought that it was heartbreaking and Billy's father said he thought, if anything, she should have helped them put flyers up. So the fact that this is his ex-girlfriend makes her look really guilty. Uh, I just felt like if you got nothing to do with his disappearance, there's no reason to take down the flyers 
if anything, kind of like his dad said, shouldn't you be helping? I mean, their breakup was so recent that I feel like most people would still care to some extent about that person and about their well-being. I would think so too, unless I think maybe there's like a a sense of guilt here too. Um, You know, even if she doesn't know where he is or doesn't know what's going on, just the fact that this happened so quickly after their Florida trip and him finding out about her uh, involvement with a married man, you know, maybe this is a reminder of what happened and it, and it's obviously around her and in the community so much and maybe this is how she's lashing out against it. Now, Madeline would claim that it wasn't her, but a friend of hers that looks a lot like her, you know, same general appearance, same hair, but she never identifies who that friend is. So that's a little suspicious. Um, not to mention that even if you were able to claim that this was someone else, like it's still someone, it's a friend of yours. It's someone you know, you know, that you're associated with. I don't even know that blaming it on a friend makes it any better, but that's what she says. Um, Madeline thought that they were targeting her by putting up these missing persons flyers in her town and along her bus route. And in her mind, they had no right to do this. Uh, She was scared that the posters would imply that she had something to do with Billy's disappearance and that they would hurt her reputation. Now, Billy's father claims that they weren't trying to target anybody. They were, you know, just trying to find their son by putting up these posters and the family and friends wonder why the flyers are bothering her so much if she had nothing to do with his disappearance. And you do kind of wonder about her motivations for not wanting these posters up because I think the family has a good point that if she, you know, wasn't involved and um, she should have no reason to not want these posters up, she should, if anything, want to help and, and figure out where her former boyfriend is and I just tried to put myself into her shoes as being innocent though so if I assume yeah maybe it was like a bad falling out so I don't really want to help I feel uncomfortable the family never really accepted me anyways uh, because they're so much older Um, but now they're searching all over and I kind of get the feeling you know they're targeting me questioning like do you have anything to do with it I see like possibly more posters Um, where I live and where I work than maybe in other places but does that really bother me if I have nothing to do with it and if I think about it I would think that not because I would kind of get where they're coming from and I think like there's no harm done I don't know I don't unless they're going on TV being like this woman you know she has killed him, then yeah. It seems like it would be an annoyance more than like, uh, I have to jump out of my car and tear these down, you know? Would I start using my free time to tear down flyers and thus hurting his family? Or would I tell friends to to do the same? I highly doubt it. So I just, yeah, it makes her look so suspicious and I don't understand that anybody in their right mind would do that. It is suspicious, and Madeline was interviewed multiple times by the police, although, according to the episode, she was not a suspect in the case. Now, there is some conflicting information about that. Um, You can go and do your own research on that, and and some say that she has been a suspect in the case, um, but the official word at the time of the episode is that she was not. Billy's family continued to hand posters, hand out those posters all over Connecticut, Um, including Madeline's hometown of Woodbridge. Billy's father claims that they had physical confrontations with Madeline. One time, Billy's mom was hanging up a flyer, and Madeline's friend uh, came up out of Madeline's car and tore it down, and then, you know, she put it back up and would just go on like that. You know, they weren't shy about tearing these down. Nine months after that incident... Um, Billy is still missing and his mother is actually arrested and charged for criminal trespass when she hung up flyers on school property in Woodbridge. Now, this is her first run-in with the law. She had never been arrested for anything before in her life. So this is a significant ordeal, just a, you know, mom trying to find her child and doing everything she can. Um, in June of 2005, Her trial began, but the prosecutor ultimately decided to 
drop the charges, which I think is um, the right thing to do. You know, this family is already dealing with enough strife and to add on, um, you know, a, a criminal charge for this, I think is, is pretty ridiculous. And um, I'm glad that the prosecutor decided to drop those charges. 100% agree. Part of me wondered, too, you know, was there something to um, Madeline's concerns and, uh, you know, some of the pushback to these posters? I know the family was aggressively searching for their son, as you would expect, but just the fact that police did find it necessary to arrest the mother for this, it makes me wonder if, you know, this was kind of building up over time, if maybe they had had enough of the family um, putting up these posters and maybe even targeting Madeline a little bit. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if they did feel, um, increased pressure to put more posters around her area. Maybe they did think that she knew more than she was telling police. And they thought if we put on pressure, um, it'll help get this case solved and our son found And Maybe police looked at it and thought, you know, this is hurting our investigation. It's causing too much drama. It's making it more difficult for us to talk to Madeline because, you know, she's um, paranoid that um, the public is about to convict her before, you know, the law does. What do you think? I think that could be a possible explanation. I don't know if I agree with it. If if they really thought it was going to hurt their investigation a lot, then I kind of get it. But everything else, I think you need to, I mean, yeah, I think you need to just be understanding of their situation and feeling so helpless. This is what they can do. This is their one thing that probably gets them up in the morning is to hang those posters and to like hope that something, you know, someone will come forward and they have a really high reward out $60,000. So you would think that makes people talk. Um, yeah. yeah. So two years pass, and in August 2006, the police are more and more convinced that Billy may have been the victim of foul play. At this point, they ask the FBI for their assistance. Billy's family decides to hire a private investigator who requested and obtained police records on Billy's case roughly two years after Billy went missing. When they read through the files, page 14 contained information about what an informant had told police 10 months earlier. The informant claimed that Billy was strangled to death by Madeline's son, Sean Kerpiak. According to police, Sean and his friends had criminal histories and were in and out of prison. The informant was the first one to give police spe specifics about Billy's supposed death. Unfortunately, Sean died six months after Billy disappeared from a heroin overdose. Police stress that this is just one theory of what happened to Billy. New tips that law enforcement focus on a location in Shelton. Sean and his friends worked on construction sites in Shelton at the time that Billy went missing. According to a tip, that's where Billy's remains can be located. And in May 2007, these places were searched by police and cadaver dogs. They dug little holes so the dogs could send a de decomposing body if there was one. The dogs gave no indication, however, that there was a body, body buried there. His family still wonders what happened to Billy and if he suffered. Billy's mother says it's the kind of situation where you just want to run up there and start digging yourself. And during the summer of 2008, police received another tip that Billy is supposedly in a metal barrel buried in nearby Seymour. Now, one of Sean's friends' family owned the property in question back in August of 2004 when Billy disappeared. So for five to six days, police were digging in the area and using metal detectors, but the search didn't reveal anything. But they also say they can't rule the property out yet because they're just a lot of ground to cover. Now, police revisit his truck and they search for DNA evidence because Billy's supposed killers may have driven it when he disappeared. And the forensic evidence, though, is inconclusive. Now, they also waited a while. I don't know if I want to say waited, but it, it did take a, a 
great number of years for them to check on this DNA evidence. And I wonder if that kind of, you know, had a disadvantage in terms of turning up any clues. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I can't think of any reason why they waited this long. I really have no idea. And I also, I mean, even in the beginning, we were kind of wondering, like, why did it take them? I mean, comparably, it's not that long, but why did it take them so long to find the wallet and keys under the seat? Right. Kind of seems sloppy. I don't, I don't know. If I was the family, I'd be even more heartbroken. I'd be devastated. This whole investigation kind of got off to like a rolling start. It was like, all right, well, we started part of it and we're going to look into this. And they're like, oh, well, and there's also this we could do. And it just kind of unfolded like that over the years. It never seemed like there was a turning point where they're like, okay, something happened to him. And now we're activating, you know, full investigation mode. It was just kind of bits and pieces over time. And it does seem like if they had going back to the you know first time that the family reported him missing if they would have just listened to that a little more seriously um and kind of processed things like you know his family was checking out his home and going through his trash and looking for clues before police were and if they would have just taken that scene over you know impounded his truck gone through the house all at once they i think they would have probably um, at least had a better shot at finding some clues and, and getting some concrete evidence into what happened. Yes, I, I do have some mixed feelings on the police work done here. Just kind of what you said, like um, early on, I think they could have probably done a better job, but then there were points in the documentary where I felt like, well, good job. You know, also like asking the FBI to join, like some police stations just won't do that because they think they can handle handle it on their own. And or maybe to pride, um, to proud. Yeah, so I, I like that. I like that they followed a lot of leads, but it kind of almost seems like they don't have a plan, like what you were saying, that they're just kind of going with it. And that may also be why they like psychics, because they get like, oh, a new thing to do. Let's go do that, you know? Yeah, it seems that way. Yeah, so I wouldn't say because there are cases where maybe you you think like, well, do they have something? Well, obviously, I don't think they have anything to do with it. But there may be cases where you feel that way or you feel like mm, they just like did a bad job because they're lazy here. I feel like maybe they just weren't like very good at it. Like, I don't think they meant anything bad with what they did. I think they yeah. tried, but I think they didn't do a good job. I agree. Yeah, I think that, that they were just seemed kind of disorganized and like they, you know, uh, had a the right arm didn't know what the left arm was doing sometimes. One thing I wish we knew more about was kind of um, who is that exactly a suspect and who was ruled out. Um, you know, we know that Billy apparently made those threats to the married man that his ex-girlfriend was seeing um what was he up to what is his explanation for the night that billy went missing um what was you know sean doing he did die but you know is there any way to look back and see what his activities were that night you know what was madeline doing i wish we had a little bit more information about how police were or weren't able to rule out some of the people who are involved in this case yes i completely agree i just wish they would have talked about that more or, yeah provided more information i also was just uh wondering i mean i know or i've heard about disappeared episodes that sometimes they kind of have like an angle that they want to run with and they leave out some stuff but i really couldn't find anything else online that pointed towards suicide as an alternative i mean he must have been like pretty upset about the breakup but other than that i i don't see anything pointing that way did you come across anything no i, I think what you said hits it you know he obviously the breakup was a emotional situation for him um and you know it, it's the one thing that could point towards suicide but you also have to remember people break up every day in great quantities and don't take their own lives so unless there's some other evidence that they have un yet uh, have yet to uncover i feel like that's not a very likely scenario and i tend to agree with the police that it seems he was the victim of foul play 
yeah, I think we agree on that. Um, and also because other of them was brought up in the disappeared episode, that that's kind of what you find online as well. Um, it just seems like there's something about Sean, about his friends. There is just a high likelihood for some involvement there or them knowing what has happened. And I've read an article that's kind of... So they, they talk about the, the informant that we've talked about. And this is apparently a close friend of Sean's. Um, and, and in this article, they don't understand why he'd run to the police right after Sean had died um, with these false information. But then I just remembered, well, there was a high reward out there of $60,000. So maybe he didn't quite know what happened, but he had some ideas. Well, like they worked on this property or this friend owned or like, you know, the family of this friend owned this property. Well, if they just find the body and I told them where to search, then I get the money. So there you have a pretty good motive why he became an informant. An informant. And I just wish it wasn't... I guess, guesses, and that he could have been more helpful and that they would have found his body so his family could have a funeral and uh, closure. Yeah, that's a very good point. I think that's a um, uh, would be a good explanation of why he might be suggesting some of these places to search. And, you know, we should point out, like they said, some of these locations, they just aren't able to exhaustively search. So maybe one of them was right. We just don't know yet. One last update that we have. Um, the family kept posting or hanging up flyers and posters, missing po- person posters of their son. And I uh, was kind of shocked to read and find out that Madeline did actually end up suing uh, the mother and the sister in 2012 over this. And uh, she won the lawsuit. But obviously the family um, tried to overturn it and it was overturned in October 2015. So then I was a little relieved to read that. Um, And this was, they were supposed to give uh, her 52,000 if it hadn't been overturned in the end. So I just feel like that amount of money could also just be spent better on solving this case. And I just really hope for his family and loved ones that it will be one day. Thanks for listening to this episode of Disappeared the Abyss. We'll see you next time. Until next time.